I probably don't have to tell you this, but the MCU is currently in a weird spot. Not great, Bob. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 just came out in theaters, and despite it having a very good critical reception and being loved by most of the fans that saw it, it opened lower than the second Guardians. Many fans fear that Marvel fatigue is actually happening in front of our eyes. And I've never seen so many comments claiming that Marvel's best days are behind them. And the truth is, Marvel's aware of what is happening and they are making some massive changes behind the scenes. And so in this video, I wanna explain everything I've heard about all these coming changes to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and I wanna tell you why I still believe Marvel's best days are ahead of it and they are going to return to form before Avengers Secret Wars. Smash a freaking like on this video and let's begin. Now, in order to properly explain what is happening right now, I feel like I must go back to last year. At San Diego Comic-Con last year, Kevin Feige came out and shocked fans around the world by putting up the titles of the next two Avengers movie, Avengers The Kang Dynasty and Avengers Secret Wars. This proved that Marvel was going to be going back to the Avengers movies, and it also proved that the Secret Wars rumors were correct. And oh man, San Diego Comic-Con was so fire. I absolutely loved checking it out, and I got so damn hyped about the announcements. But the reality of that announcement became very clear over time. You see, Kevin Feige put Secret Wars on to that big board at San Diego Comic-Con because he wanted to change the narrative. The narrative around the MCU, especially surrounding Phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, was that there was no actual plan moving forward. And so in order to combat against that narrative, Feige puts up the Avengers Kang Dynasty and Avengers Secret Wars telling fans that you're going to get this two-part epic story coming out in the same freaking year in 2025. But you see, even that plan to get to those two movies in 2025 was uncertain at the time. And we know that that announcement and that those plans from San Diego Comic-Con last year were premature because they've already changed them. Secret Wars was pushed back an entire year, as was the Fantastic Four. And many of the Disney Plus shows have been delayed indefinitely. We technically have no idea when some of these shows are going to release. And so you see, Kevin Feige was already making changes behind the scenes. And then Quantum Mania happened and weeks later, Jonathan Majors was arrested. And so needless to say, even more change is on the way. And I think Quantum Mania massively underperforming at the box office was a signal to Marvel Studios and Kevin Feige that they needed to accelerate the plans of change that they already were working on. And so that's what they're doing right now. Feige was already fixing things, but now he's fixing things even more and even faster. But what does that look like for us fans? Well, I actually think if we look to the past, if we look at why Marvel was able to be so successful during its first 10 years, we can understand why some of the changes that are happening right now will actually equate to getting back to that Marvel magic. I frankly don't think Marvel Studios gets enough credit for the quality that they held for their movies in that first 10 years. I mean, sure. There are a few misses here and there, and several of the movies are just okay or mid. But there are so many good movies in that catalog, and most of those movies had no right being as good as they were. Marvel's ability to keep the bar very high and deliver good movie after good movie was one of the factors that separated them from other comic book movie franchises, and it just elevated elevated the entire brand. And part of the magic behind this quality came directly from Kevin Feige, who is said to have this like uncanny ability to know exactly when an audience is going to check out of a movie. This is something that Sam Raimi has talked about after working with Kevin Feige. Well, I've really enjoyed the Marvel movies that I'd seen. They were all made with great quality. They really uh, regard the integrity of the character as their primary job. But a lot of the other actors and directors have talked about this as well, that Kevin Feige just has this crazy ability to sit there, watch a movie, and know exactly when it's 
going a little off the rails. It kind of reminds me of the ability that Mr. Beast has to know exactly when retention in a video is going to fall down. Like I've watched a lot of interviews with Mr. Beast. He talks about this as a skill and I've even seen him call it out when he's on a podcast when the person is asking uninteresting questions and he knows the retention of the video is about to go down. Dude, I I'm an in and out enthusiast. I, in -and -out I feel the ret retention. Just, you know, <laughs> just give us the rating so we can level it. God. <laughs> Holy it is absolutely a special talent that this guy has. And when Marvel was making the Infinity Saga movies, they had years to not only develop a project, but to look at what they had and make changes to it. Marvel's famous for doing a lot of reshoots, for retooling their movies. This is something that James Gunn recently talked about while he was in the press store for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And I've learned a lot about, you know, working hard on films that maybe you know work well or maybe don't work so well in trying to make them better in post-production the marvel method which is something that they've done since the very first iron man is to constantly retool and really use a lot of feedback via screenings and just kevin feige himself just watching the movie to make changes and make the best possible film however when marvel went into the multiverse saga or what at the time was just known as phase four they took on an absolute absolutely insane amount of projects. I personally just think on volume, there was no way they were going to be able to hold the quality that they had before because they wouldn't have the time to look over this stuff, decide where it needed to be changed, and then go do reshoots or pickups to make those changes. On top of that, of course, they had delays and a bunch of disastrous production situations due to the pandemic. They had the untimely passing of Chadwick Boseman, which created a ton of problems for the Black Panther sequel. And frankly, I think we all realized that T'Challa was gonna play a big role in what was going on with the Marvel Cinematic Universe and likely be one of the main Avengers moving into the next Avengers films. And additionally, the idea of the Marvel canon and the fact that all of these movies were so connected, and this all led to a scenario in the beginning of phase four where Marvel couldn't even shuffle these different projects around because of the canon connections, right? Another thing, that's amazing about Marvel, but is also really restrictive. If everything is connected via a canon story, then if you move one project, you have to change like three other projects. But because all of the productions were so crazy and they needed to change so many things, what they did was remove all of these different elements. This resulted in many intriguing and interconnected story ideas to be abandoned and scrapped from these different projects. And what that resulted in is less great product that didn't feel like it had an impact on the overall universe or was connected to a wider story. And it was all coming out at a higher frequency than ever. And that leads us to San Diego Comic-Con last year where Kevin Feige came out on stage and shocked us all by putting up onto the screen the next two Avengers movies, Avengers The Kang Dynasty and Avengers Secret Wars proving that the Secret Wars rumors were correct. But the reality of that announcement is that it was an announcement made to show that there was still a plan because Feige was fully aware then and is fully aware now of what the fans are saying, what the criticisms are of the Marvel Cinematic Universe products. I also believe that Feige had begun trying to address the quality problem as well, but I've kind of come to believe that he made an oversight in judgment. And actually this is a big problem with like phase four and quantum mania. I frankly think Feige believed he had more time, that there was so much goodwill with the Marvel audience that they would be able to suffer through some, you know, more mediocre content and stuff that wasn't really connected far longer than they actually were. And so what I kind of think was happening was Feige was working on the 2024 projects and making some changes to how he wanted to approach the different shows and the different movies. However, one of those movies that should have gotten a lot more 
care and probably more time was Quantum Mania. And Quantum Mania was received so poorly from critics and from most fans that Marvel and Disney were jolted into a state of shock. I mean, Victoria Alonso was let go of the company after 17 years. And I and many other people believe that was something of a warning from Bob Iger to show that Marvel Studios was not above criticism and was not above reprieve. And after that happened, even more delays hit Marvel. I started hearing crazy stuff, like they were gonna pull it all the way back to maybe doing one or two shows a year. They had delayed Agatha Coven of Chaos indefinitely. It went from having a release this year to maybe coming out in 2025. The Marvels was delayed yet again. It is going through massive reshoots as I make this video. They are tweaking the heck out of that film. And delay after delay after delay has hit Marvel Studios. Echo might still come out this year, but it was delayed off its original date as well. And this is all being done so that Kevin Feige can get back to actually taking his time and going through that quality control process to make sure that all this Marvel content is as good as it possibly can be before it's released. And there's another interesting factor here when it comes to the quality control because we've also heard that during phase four and possibly even for quantum mania kevin feige had many different battles with the directors or the writers of these projects but more than he had during the infinity saga he let the battles go like we heard that he had a lot of beef with Chloe Zhao behind the scenes and during the making of The Eternals, and that ultimately Kevin Feige allowed Zhao to have it her way and create the movie in a way that he personally did not think was the best version of the film. We've also heard a lot of comments from Sam Raimi talking about how there were elements that Sam Raimi really wanted to be in the movie that Feige argued with him about saying they'd be too campy and ultimately Feige allowed Sam Raimi to keep his campy scenes. And we've heard many different stories about this and I think this is partially just due to the volume, right? Like Feige probably just didn't have the bandwidth to fight with all of these different creatives and to sort of force what he would consider a more four quadrant acceptable version of these different shows and movies. And there are even rumors that he was butting heads with some of his top lieutenants. After Victoria Alonso was fired, insider Jeff Snyder talked to the fact that Alonso and Feige had been butting heads a lot for the last couple of years. And that also could have been a part of the quality control. It's even possible Victoria Alonso was arguing or lobbying to Kevin Feige to let some of this stuff go, to allow the artistic expression of these different people to shine through and not be so iron fisted with his control. And I think that is going away now. I think Feige is put in a position where he's going to have more time and he's going to have more control to to make sure that all this stuff is up to par. And so for all those reasons I just listed, I expect the overall quality of Marvel to get right back to where it was pre-phase four. However, and I think this is gonna shock some of you guys, but I personally don't think that's enough. Why, why, why? Why? I don't think just making much better, higher quality products is actually gonna bring the magic of the Infinity Saga back to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think Marvel also needs a really interconnected story. The Infinity Saga had this brilliant strategy of setting up the different Infinity Stones as MacGuffins in the separate films. This allowed fans to speculate a lot, and especially after Age of Ultron, we would anticipate how these different MacGuffins were going to end up being used and what Infinity Stone did they represent. This also, of course, led to a really interesting nostalgia time heist in Endgame where our heroes would go back in time to the different moments of the Infinity Saga and retrieve the Infinity Stones. But it wasn't just the Infinity Stones and the MacGuffins. We also had a lot of interconnected stories with the same characters, the Avengers characters characters themselves were explored via the different films like the Winter Soldier and Civil War. And this allowed us to have a ton of history, a lot of important things to pull from when 
we finally got to Infinity War and Endgame. And I have heard, and I do believe, that both of these things are going to be addressed with the Marvel stuff moving forward. And so in the basic sense, Kang and different variants of Kang are going to replace the ideas of the Infinity Stone MacGuffins popping up in all of these different movies. And this is likely to begin with Loki Season 2, but we've heard you're going to get a Shang-Chi 2, which is going to heavily focus on a Kang variant. We're rumored to be getting a Doctor Strange 3, which will likely focus on Kang variants. It's even possible that Mr. Griffin and Kang Industries are going to be the people that actually bought the Avengers Tower in the MCU. And so I think you're going to be seeing a lot of different Kangs. Now, of course, it's in question on whether or not they'll actually be played by Jonathan Majors because of his legal trouble. But the word is they're moving ahead with Kang regardless, and they will just recast if it seems like they can't keep Jonathan Majors. And so you're going to have Kang and different versions of Kang popping up in a lot of different stories as we lead to the next two Avengers movies where it's all going to culminate in the Kang Dynasty where you're going to see a ton of these different Kang variants all fighting the Avengers and that if pulled off correctly is going to fix that big problem of interconnectedness but there's also the whole idea of exploring these different characters as we get closer to that Avengers movie and I think we're going to start exploring all of those characters starting next year. I mean, a little bit, you're going to get some Carol Danvers stuff going on in the Marvels. That's going to connect to the multiverse, and it's possible that Carol will then come back to planet Earth, although I kind of doubt that. What I'm really talking about is Captain America 4, which is apparently going to change its name. It's no longer going to be called New World Order, and instead will be something probably focusing on the Hulks, maybe even call it Gamma War. But either way, Sam Wilson is going to have a team, but it's very very likely that a lot of other major players in the Earthbound Marvel stories will pop up or feel the impact of what happens in Captain America 4. I even think that at the end of that film, you're going to see Sam Wilson realize he does need to reassemble the Avengers. And then going right into the Thunderbolts, you're supposed to have a ton of connective tissue between Captain America 4 and the Thunderbolts because they're going to be exploring Tiamat Island, going after the Adamantium. You're going to have even more Hulks popping up, even more super soldiers popping up, the creation of the Sentry himself, and of course you're going to have Bucky Barnes leading the Thunderbolts team and that dude's obviously an Avenger has a lot of different character stuff with Sam Wilson and I even expect Daredevil Born Again to have a ton of different Avengers or, you know, street level New York City heroes involved in that story, which will culminate in Spider-Man 4, where again I think you're going to see a lot of of the cast and the crew of the Earthbound Marvel stories all culminating. So you're going to get that flavor again. We're going to get back to that Winter Soldier Civil War time period where we're going to grow with these characters. And as we get closer to the Kang Dynasty, you're going to just have so many more relationships to pull from, so many more things to pay off in that film. I think it's even possible that some of the Avengers will end up going back in time with Shang-Chi in Shang-Chi 2. And so essentially, you'll have two incredible things fixed if this all goes according to plan. You're going to have the interconnectedness and that sort of constant story that involves all of these different characters. And you're also going to have a much higher bar of quality. That already feels a lot like what we got in the Infinity Saga. And I think that will be enough to bring a lot of Marvel fans back. But this next point that I want to bring up is the thing that I think will push it all over the top. Get the hype to unprecedented levels. And this is why I continue to believe despite everything that's happening right now with Marvel, that Secret Wars and the Marvel Cinematic Universe projects around Secret Wars will eclipse the hype level of Infinity War and Endgame. And this has to do with truly utilizing the multiverse and the idea of a battle world phase. And the details on this are kind of sketchy right now. We don't know 100% what is happening, but multiple reliable people have hinted that there might be a second part to Secret Wars, making it actually a trilogy, if you think about it, between Kang Dynasty, Secret Wars, and what I think is going to end up being called Eternity Wars. But what's even cooler is apparently there's going to be an entire phase likely to be phase six or maybe even phase seven 
happen that will take place in the battle world universe. This will allow for incredible multiverse ideas to be explored. And I think these are some of the projects where you'll see like a Chris Evans Captain America going through the multiverse in the Nomad project. Might even see a Spider-Verse project with all the Spider-Men also doing something crazy on Battleworld. The sky is truly the limit, and I think some of the most incredible ideas from Marvel Comics are going to be explored in the different projects that will come out around this time period. If this is really something that Marvel is going to do, it is going to take the idea of Secret Wars to an entirely new level. And even beyond that, it is possible that that saga itself will have a bunch of connective tissue, will follow a ton of characters throughout those projects, and then when we finally get to Eternity Wars, it's going to be even bigger than Secret Wars. Basically, I still think Feige is holding some of his cards close to the vest. I think he has ideas that are absolutely mind-blowing. We are just living through the era of him trying to figure out a path towards those and deal with a lot of the problems that I've already talked about in this video. Are you convinced? Are you excited? Do you think Marvel will get back on track or are you still skeptical of that happening? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Smash a like on this video if you enjoyed getting filled in. And if you want to watch more, why not check out this video I just made talking about this new crazy Luke Skywalker rumor and going over some stuff I've heard from my sources.